Oh my gosh, you know what I can't stand? Homework, but you know what? Today we get to learn how you can record it and that's it. Sales Ascender, Chris here. How's it going? You're back for another Spotlight. And today's guests are fabulous, fantastic. They're going to help us go further faster. Here's the thing. Our community, there's so much freaking talent. I say this every week. Maybe you're like, Chris, you say that all the time because it's true every time. We are talking to real business owners about getting real results in a real way. And they're on the front line. And today's guests are on the front line, all things podcast. Here's the thing. We know content works. We know it works. I don't need to sell you or any other business owner or marketer for that matter that content works. In fact, podcasts, like 70, 80% of, of listeners listen to all of it. Their annual household income is like 75, 80 grand or higher. And today's guest might be able to critique some of those. Maybe there's even better stats from the last time I looked at it. But here's the thing. We can't ignore it, but we're busy. We don't want to spend money. We want to spend more time. It's just another project on, on the table. But fear not. Today's guests, they're going to guide us to the light. They're going to make this so easy. They're going to make it easier to fill our calendars, meet the ideal customer that we want, build the brand that we want. And that's why I have the help of Ron and Corey. Ron and Corey, thanks for coming out today. What is going on, Chris? Thanks so much for having us. Uh, honored to be here and uh, hang out with you for a few. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> um, so, hey, there's a couple things that we need to cover today, but I know like ev everyone watching this is they've been inundating with podcasts, agencies, and you know, let, let's just start with if we're not doing a podcast or we've thought about it for three years and we haven't taken action, why should we listen to this and, and why is it going to be different and why are we going to get over the line today? Well, at the end of the day, you've got to publish something, right? If you are an online yeah. marketer, you've got to publish something. And, and so why not a podcast? And, and well, I love podcasts. I love listening to them. So at the end of the day, like that makes sense for me. Other people, they might just love doing Facebook lives. And don't yeah. you worry, we have people that all they do is a Facebook live, but it turns into a podcast. We have a dog trainer. She records 10 minute tips for her Facebook group, and then it turns into a podcast, right? Like anybody can do, have it be a podcast and you can make it frictionless as our favorite biz bros like to call it. And at the end of the day, if you're going to go out and publish, the podcast can be an extra thing that's truly frictionless for you to get your name out there everywhere you want to be. You said something really big and it basically the, fr the the premise of it is repurposing. Ron, can you speak to why repurposing works? Because I, like I just, in the when that happened in the back of my head, I was like, oh, but each channel is different. If you just repurpose, is it really going to matter? Is it going to get the traction? And like, I don't, I, even if it's just a Facebook live, I don't want to spend even time doing that, knowing that if it's going to be repurposed, it's not even going to work. So Ron, can you speak to that? Oh yeah. So I, I'll just kind of open the curtains on how we do our own show. So Let's we will, do it. <laughs> we will do a live broadcast on Monday. And so that's in Facebook and goes right to YouTube, right? Then it's done. Then we'll, we don't edit our show because it's, it's live. So why would we do that? And uh, we'll get all the content for the podcast platforms out probably within seven days. So there's a little bit of a lag and it's done on purpose, mm -hmm. but now we're we're able to connect with different people that wherever they are. So you're connecting where they want to be. Now, going back to the content piece, 30 minutes of our podcast interview gets broken up into 50 pieces of content that gets mm. sprinkled. And then we make it very guest focused driven. So we have one guest who shared our content since October of last year. Still one went out Got today. It. Yeah. One went out today on LinkedIn. So like her, her thing is on LinkedIn. We work really hard to make it a very platform specific shareable. So then you're meeting your clients or your guests or your people that are noticing you where they want to be. Right. Got it. And, Got and, it. and we don't put it on the same day, the same things, because then people will get bored of you. But literally our, our clients will say, we see you guys everywhere. Right. Got it. And, and that's it. what that's what content does for you. Okay, so basically, what I was I, I'm hearing you say is when you when you're repurposing, it does matter, mm -hmm. and you do that work. And so you're you're taking LinkedIn or Instagram, Facebook, sprink. You use the word sprinkling. Sprinkles just make me smile. So <laughs> a, as well as they do my kids. Right. So uh, <laughs> so you sprinkle it all over, make other people smile with the con content brand being being out there. I love another key thing that you said: the timing of it. It's not. 
this episode, this thing, publish on all platforms all at the same time everywhere. It's like, no, it's you have like a whole, I'm a, how do you do that? A calendar? Like, how are you managing that? Because there's a lot of logistics in what you just said. You've got multiple platforms. You've got same content. When is what going out when? How do you manage that? The yeah, hero, hero post uh, <laughs> and, and help with our VA. But ultimately, I mean, we were at a point uh, and, and we're kind of a little radio silent right now on purpose, but we were doing three posts a day amongst the three platforms. And then we were going live for our show every day. And and that's where it would go to to uh, to Facebook and YouTube. But it, it's definitely, you know, we go to the group. We know like anybody that has a Facebook group, you know you want to give them value. So how do you find a way give, to give them value? And video is king. At the end of the day, video is still king. So find a way to go live and give them value, whatever your topic is, whatever your Facebook group is, right? Like you're giving your group value, hopefully right now by this member spotlight, you're giving us value by getting our name out there, right? Like you guys gotta be bringing the heat. You gotta take care of them. <laughs> and so, so you're giving your group value, but then yeah. this, there's different people that are listening and a podcast is, is the exact same as what you're doing right here. Like you could take this yeah. member spotlight and put it on yeah. iTunes and we would be happy to help, but you would have <laughs> 30, 30 episodes of podcasting happening right then, right? right? And then you can 30. just sprinkle it. I mean, because you've done, I, I imagine you've done roughly 30 episodes or 30s member spotlights, maybe more that I haven't paid attention to. But since I've been paying attention, there's been like 30, I don't know. And, uh, and so there's 30 episodes ready to go. There we go. Yeah. There we and, go. and think about it. The people that don't know you and they search you, they're going to get into your ecosystem on a podcast if that's where they want to receive their content. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Just curious. Hey, every, everyone listening, watching right now, let us, let us just in the comments, let us know, let us know where you prefer. If you're watching this right this second and not the replay, Facebook lives, probably, probably the one which makes sense, but hey, let us know if, if you prefer podcasts, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, where do you like to consume? Where do you consume the most content? Uh, I know for me, hands down, YouTube uh, d destroys all categories. They, they suck in my attention and, you know, and all that. It just for you guys, do you guys listen to podcasts personally the most? Obviously, podcast works fantastic. There's very quality buyers on podcasts, uh, but just curious for you guys, where do you consume most of your content? Yeah, I, I do podcasts. And then when there's a topic or something that catches my my ear, then I try to go find it on YouTube to get the visual aspect of whatever it might be. Right. And uh, so there's several people like that. And, you know, Christy Code Red, I know you had a conversation with her. I mean, I mean, she every Wednesday has a live show go to YouTube and to her podcast. But then she does promotion around that throughout the week. And, and on top of all the other stuff she does for uh, her YouTube channel, which she does amazing at, right? Like there's 22,000 subscribers on YouTube and uh, and she follows the Marley Jacks way. Like they they definitely, they've got it dialed in. And so, yeah, yeah I would listen. If, if I was listening to Christy's show, I, if I heard something I really liked, you know, I'd be like, oh, okay, it was episode 119. Let me, I wanted to go see that two minute segment. Right. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, I watched that video and there's another teaser and then there's another tutorial or a how to, or, or something. And then I'm hooked in the YouTube. Right. And yeah. so but it would have been for me, it's the podcast starts me on that journey. Got it. Got it. Uh, Ron, anything you want to add to that? Yeah. So for me, I'm, I'm graphics guy and visual guy. So like I go right to anything that's a visual thing. So we have a product called a vodcast, which is a video show. And that's basically what this is. And I look on YouTube first, like instantly on how to's anything I need to do. I'm, I'm on YouTube looking for it, even if it's just in the background going and I've turned it into something I just listened to. I can look at it when I want to, but it's still YouTube for me. Got it. Okay. That, that's how, it's, it, I always love hearing people's process, how they think, how they uh, consume information as ho hopefully all of us marketers <laughs> right. are paying attention to that. Um, here's, a, here's a direction I'd like to go uh, with, with podcasts. The claim in the beginning, you record it and it's done. It's very attractive. You just got to show up, do your thing, and then 
And then all of the leverage of that time exists, meaning repurposing, putting in all the platforms. People are knowing you, getting to know you, like you, and trust you without any additional time. That's extremely valuable. All the list of tasks that it takes to do that. The reason why none of the solopreneurs are doing it, because it's way too much freaking work on top of everything. So imagine hiring just one employee and then poof, like all of that stuff is taken care of. It's interesting, it's powerful, but here's the problem. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so Ron, I'll let you go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that that's easy because here, yeah. here's the deal. And, and we actually had this conversation with one of our clients and, and we really promote and teach people to be the subject matter expert of whatever it is on their own show. Because if you can't be the subject matter expert, on your own show, when, where can you be the subject matter expert ever? Right. So we really help somebody like if they're starting from scratch, we had one person never did a Facebook live ever, ever. Right. Uh, was, I, I'm just going to say he was afraid of a camera. Okay. So we, he went through our, scary sometimes. Yeah, we, we, he went through our program. He landed number one in parenting on his launch. Wow. And, and he goes live every day and he has a Facebook group that he goes live in because we've created, we created a space where he got used to being on camera, but he's the subject matter expert of that now. And he's created some really cool partnerships with his podcast. So not only do we help you be the subject matter expert, we give you some con or topics and we work through what your pillars are. And then we break those down so you have 12 months of stuff to talk about. Uh, okay, so you do you do it ahead of time. Okay, mm -hmm. and you have some frameworks that you you work through. Okay, so that this you're getting me closer. This is helping. Yeah. But but Corey, Ron just said something really really key uh, that I would imagine <laughs> any business owner in their right mind would have caught, which was well it went number one. Mm -hmm in this category. So what, my brain is like, okay, well, I want to be one, number one in the category. How do I, uh, Corey, how do I be number one? What's the secret to launching? Not just saying, oh, like releasing or whatever, you know, phrase well, we want to use. Well, the secret is you go to profitswithpodcast.com and, and <laughs> our program. Like that's, that's secret number well one. Well played, but, well played, but, sir. If, if you, if what we get through to folks is at the end of the day, so many people, when they're launching a podcast, they get stuck on a lot of the details. They get stuck on, oh my gosh, I just recorded this. Now I got to figure out how to edit. Oh my gosh, how do I make a piece of graphic? Who do I trust to make some graphics if I can't make it myself? Right? Like they've got all these things that could hold them up from getting their word out. Right? And so now going through our program, we actually hang, handle all of that for them. We handled all of that for everybody from day one. So again, they focus on just recording it. And then we have a real long, not long, we have a process. It's like two weeks of strong promotion and a process of getting the right people to join as guests for their show and the process of what Ron was talking about being the subject matter expert. So you have those things where we've got the done for you. They've got the right guests. They do two solid weeks of the right promotion and they've got this up there, the subject matter expert. Now on launch day, they can be number one. We've had uh, number one, we've had number two, we've had a person number four. We've, uh, you know, done relaunches of folks in hitting number eight. In, somebody uh, get invited to a TEDx speaking stage what? because she launched what? her podcast. Yep. Right? People getting asked Mic to drop. speak on summits and all kinds of stuff just from the launch, not even from long term, but from the launch. And so, Every single person we've helped, like they hit the charts. Some charts are harder to hit because, you know, U.S. marketing or U.S. relationships, you're going against, uh, you know, Brene Brown. A little bit more difficult. We had someone hit number four. <laughs> just going against Oprah and Brene Brown. Yeah, <laughs> hit number four. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Right? Yeah, four, four will take all day long for that one. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Oprah is hard to compete with. Right. It's, yeah. So it's, but at the end of the day, the process is simple. It takes 30 days. And two weeks of, if you follow the steps, you know, we've got the done for you. We do the hard stuff and, and we'll get anybody into the charts. And the other thing really quick, I need to add on to this because this is important. When we launched our show, we realized if we didn't know how to edit in graphics, they would have costed more to launch a show, right? So we're like, what if we just do something super crazy 
and just include everything with zero upsells. And then we'll teach people how to edit and then they can choose to use us or not. But they're launched and they're gone and they're doing it. They have all the assets. They have all the branding. They have the intro, the outros, everything done for you with zero upsell. And everyone said we were crazy. But you know what? It's more important for us that the impactor gets their message out. And we feel if we do things the right way, more will come back to us. See, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to have you guys out today is it's it always comes down to who the who the person or who the people are. And when, if you think you have an idea, a problem to solve, and you're going to come to the market and you're like, I can solve this problem. The market's going to look back at you and say, I don't give a damn. (laughs) If you suck, I'm going to tell you. (laughs) And you're going to go home crying and broke. And, and so, but my, my point is this, it comes, the people that come into the market that say, I'm committed to getting a result and serving these humans, these people within the market end up winning. And the comments that you just made are the result is you got, if no one knows you exist, this doesn't work. And so what's breaking this down? Some graphic designing. Hey, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll own that. We'll own that responsibility. We'll help and get people over the line and start getting it out there. And, and also man, TED, TEDx, uh, that's a big deal, right? right. What's crazy about speaking is mo- there's so many smart quality people that no one will ever know what needs to be said it's like my point is the stage matters mm-hmm. and some of the rankings matter and so having a team uh, around you that you know knows like, i don't know how to do that <laughs> you know i could i could text my mom like mom i got a podcast now <laughs> that's one down but- yeah. <laughs> I could be, what could I be number one in? Right. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. In, uh, Siberia, you might start number one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going global, babe. <laughs> number one global. Um, okay. So, so th- this is helpful. We're, t- we're talking, uh, you know, launching and, and dominating in certain categories. L- here's what comes to mind. I'd really like to spend some time on this because a lot of people that are doing lives or interviews, podcasts, specifically, Man, it's really important to find quality guests like Ron and Corey and all the other people, right? So, what's what's a good? How do you guys address that? I'm sure you've been you've never been asked that before, right? Never. never. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, obviously, this varies based on the the, the person's niche that they're in, right? Like, uh, our we've got one client, and and I mentioned a dog trainer. We have another client that she is a pet photographer. And she actually had trouble getting in touch with all these different influencers uh, that have for their pets. There's like some pet Instagram handle with 25,000 or 200,000, like all over the board of these folks. And she had trouble trying to get in touch with them until she launched her podcast. Hmm. And now she has an easy end to get this conversation going and an easy way to start these relationships of which she has benefited mightily from. And uh, Oh, sorry. So as you're saying that, I just, uh, the idea hit me. So you're saying like her, her outreach approach, her connection approach. Hey, I have a podcast. would love to have you on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, she, and, she, and these are people already she was trying to get in touch with. Right. And I, I just wanted to mention that because as, uh, as what a business owner, whoever you're trying to speak to for whatever reason, if you have a platform for them to share their business on or their own info info on, then you're, it's going to be easy to find those guests that you talk about, right? And so, you know, Ron and I, we selfishly used our podcast as free coaching. I mean, you've right. been on our show to give us free coaching before. And that's like we we use, you know, Thank I you. would say 50% <laughs> of our guests have been on our show to give Ron and I free coaching. And yeah. and then they share their stuff as, as well. But it's selfishly yeah. that like those are good guests we find. So we look for people who can we learn from, Right that that yeah. those are kind of one set of people that that fit for for looking for a podcast guest whether uh, so again whatever niche you're in f- look for people that you can learn from and then then the other piece is is who do you need to build a relationship with and and so finding guests is super easy yeah we haven't had anybody say no I mean, we just asked for people to come on and you know we've had actors you guys have had some big names yeah we've we, and we feel very blessed that we we're able to do that but we did it to either learn from 
And we just wanted to see what would happen. Like I was on <laughs> Dave, Dave oh. Metzler's show. Like after he was on our show, he asked for me to be on his show. And it was crazy because it was like Terrell Owens, me, and then some guy that worked with Tom Brady, right? And I was like, T.O.? Yeah, I was like, this is seriously happening happening right now, right? But it never would have happened without a silly little podcast. So like, and, and let me let me break it down even further. When we started this silly little podcast, we both had six figure jobs that we worked at. Okay. The the podcast enabled us to leave said jobs. Okay. Okay. So let's, we gotta, so we gotta have to play with some of those numbers. Cause that's, we, I mean, a lot of us hear marketing and different mm-hmm. words. And, and I know for our conversation, like, you know, you guys are legit that totally happened. And, and so this is why it's a, a fun, relevant conversation. Yeah. Where where did the monetization kick in, and you know, like bring us along that journey for a second? Sure. Well, uh, anybody that you can, so many people I see in these Facebook groups on podcasting, and they're like, "How do I monetize my show?" And so many people are, well, you you put together a deck and you go look for a sponsorship, and you've got to have a thousand downloads an episode, and and I definitely look at every single one of those and I laugh because. You honestly, you can have a podcast and never have a single download and still monetize it. We have a guy who never launched his podcast and he's making money. He's recorded 50 or so episodes. He's never launched it. And he makes money from it. <laughs> I see. So it's just the, so, so you don't, let's talk sponsorships for a second. So you don't have to run commercials or sponsorships on your podcast? No, nope. never. Huh. We, so, so what we teach, what we teach is run a commercial to your thing on your show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you're going to run a sponsorship, you sponsor your own show. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I got to make some immediate changes, which is why Krispy Kreme, this is now the last show that we'll be sponsoring you on. <laughs> now I want to it. I, I can't it. That wait to crazy. get rid of that. I just, I'm so tired. <laughs> so no, I always but, have, you go, sorry, go keep going. I was just going to say at the end of the day, it's about the relationships that you build. So you find yeah. you find the people and, and you know, utilizing the sales ascenders Facebook group for yourself, right? Like the more relationships, however you build the relationships, the more you can promote the people within that group, eventually some of us are probably gonna buy from you. Right. Yeah. And and yeah. it's just a matter of how those relationships go and how how you can support them. And so uh, having a podcast allows you to have sales calls without ever having a sales call. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a huge, huge like tip for everyone listening. Like if you're someone that doesn't identify with a sales professional, salesperson, uh, and you don't want to do sales calls because they're scary and gross or whatever, this is a fantastic path for you to go to where it's a very natural conversation. You get to lead with an invitation. Uh, and, and, but uh, which turns quickly into free coaching if you do it right. Uh, the way Ron and Corey are right. doing. Well, and, 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 and also, I mean, if you think about it, you have your ideal client on the show, right? Yeah. 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 And then you ask them questions. You already understand all their pain points and you've already built a relationship with them. The show's over. You probably can help them in whatever it is that you do. Totally makes sense. So let's talk about, Let's talk about the pre-show, the pre-interview. Let's talk about the post-interview, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, content, I do the thing. But like, there's, come on, like when we're networking and connecting, what's happening? We were chopping it up a little bit before, right? And then yeah, we'll, we'll recap after. So talk like best practices, anything you'd like to speak to there? Well, for those that don't go live, hit, hit the record button. Right away. Someone joins. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. No, it's, again, so because Ron and I go live, we actually, if we don't know the person that's coming on our show, we schedule a pre-call. And so we'll get on for a 10 okay. minute, 15 minute conversation beforehand, just to make sure that they're going to be a good fit for the show. Right. Because if they're, okay. if they're on paper, they look great, but then they show up and, and we've had this before we started going live. I've they showed up and we're like, can we get an interview? Yeah, like how can we get off of this faster than, than we originally <laughs> planned? And and there's multiple shows that we've recorded that will never air to uh, any kind of podcast platform. So a 
you start that relationship through the conversations. You get them on the a conversation beforehand, even if it's 15 minutes, to know what they, they're about, to know you know how their energy level is. And then it just makes the actual podcast easy, right? And then just as Ron mentioned, as you have that conversation, you know their pain points. After you're done with the podcast, you know how you may or may not be able to serve them. And even if it's not you serving them, maybe you know somebody that can serve them, right? And if you connect that and continue that relationship after, I mean, that's a, right. Anybody says in sales, right? Fortunes in the follow-up. So at the end of the day, so, it's the same yeah. exact thing. You you hit end, you stop recording, you goes to the podcast land, and then there's the next time you talk to them, it, you know, it, it's got to be more of nurturing that relationship. How did you, how can you solve their problem? Whatever it is like, oh, your podcast is going live. Here's all these fun shareables that showcase how smart you are or what kind of expert you are. Right. And then, yeah. and then you're able to just continue to do that. And, and eventually if, if you've done your job, they know what you do on top of it and, and you can solve things beforehand. So, yeah. Makes it makes complete sense. Um, I, I get my question that I want to ask is how much is too much? Because in my mind, I'm like, okay, let's turn all sales calls into you know podcast interviews, and you know I'll be interviewing five people a day. That could get aggressive, but I mean, obviously, you're not going to publish um, five a day. Um, so I don't know. Like, I guess in theory, like the, the the quick easy answer is there's not too much, but at the same time. Um, if you generated that much, is that like a John Lee Dumas, like post a thing a day for a year and your life changes? Or like I, if you guys could speak to frequency uh, of a podcast, what's a good goal? Yes. Once a week, period, end of story. Do not do more. Ever, ever, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. Oh, no. I did not expect I, that. Not ever. But, but and I want to challenge about, it, but I don't even know why yet. <laughs> no, let, let, let's talk about this. We, we helped a client and, and yeah. we tell everybody it's more than you expect it, even if you're just recording. Guests don't show up. I mean, there's things that happen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you commit to more than one a week, even if you're ahead in month one, what happens when you actually get clients in and you actually do work? What's going to fall off? Your podcast, probably. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right? So you have to build in the consistency of the future. Like Corey and I, we did every Monday, period, end of story, never missed one ever. Right. And then we started slowly adding other shows because we were so far ahead. We were like 70 interviews ahead. Oh my God. Right. And, and yeah. then we're like, uh, let's put more out. And then we started a daily show. And and then we started going Monday through Friday every day. Uh, um, okay. And then, then some was interviews, some was just a 10 minute quick hit. Um, you know, but we have the capacity to do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and under, we understood, you know, now we have people that, that work with us and, and we have a nice system that's working, but literally how we schedule our time, we schedule even the 10 minute episodes on our calendar because they're live. So we go live <laughs> and then we, we, we nail those out and those go right into our Facebook group. That's the only place you see them. Unless you're on the podcast. Love it. And, but so to, to circle back on that answer, Ron, consistency is the most important thing. Yeah. So if you can only, you've got to go, in my opinion, at least once a week. Mm -hmm. And if you can't be consistent beyond two months at that, then, then you can't do more. Right. And so many people start off with, well, I know it's how much this can benefit me and I'm going to do it two or three or however many times a week. And then things fall off, things get missed. And so that's the key. Like start with where you can be consistent, doing it once a week, publishing it, getting it out, getting ahead. And then, yeah, like Ron and I did, you get you can add from there. And so we started from one, we went to two, then we went to five. So. Got it. Okay. That's a really good process. Like even for, for the spotlight, um, as you guys know, like we're, we're booked out through September now. Right. And and I'm getting and I started bringing it back. Now now we're like, well, shoot. Some people, it doesn't make sense to wait till September. And so we're like, well, what do we do with this? And so it's kind of that that conundrum where we're like, well, I guess we'll start, you know, just do, doing more. Um, so it's that natural progression. It sounds like yeah. Um, well, how, like let's talk about engagement for a second. So we're we're in the interview. Like, 
there's a lot of podcasts. There's a lot of noise in general. There's a lot of content to compete with. Uh, best practices, maybe like top one, top two best ways to stand out in your content. What's the secret, Ron? Video. Video shareable. Video. V- literally, little snippets. We, I mean, we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the beginning. We uh, were in a Facebook group. And it was a really big name. And we were nobody in that Facebook group. Okay. So every time homework was done, since we do video, we would make video skits of this homework, right? Even, hmm. even signing the contract, I made a whole ESPN like college signing for Corey. Wait, what? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like even stuff like that. It was just simple where people would just post a picture. We did videos and then we posted it. And it was all branded, even though they said no branding. <laughs> right? It's Not so funny branded. what funny gets away with. <laughs> oh, yeah. But but what even better is that got us noticed by not only everyone in the group. And there was, what, 50,000 people in that group? There was a lot yeah, of people. Huge, yeah. And, and the people that were that owned the group were calling us out saying how cool it was. And they recorded it and made it evergreen. So now we're evergreen in their thing that's branded our stuff, right? And we've we've, we've got a ton of clients from that. But, but one specifically, like that started with, oh yeah. I I know you guys work for these guys, but would you but do would any you work, work for others? Us? And, and we're, we're like, like, no, we don't work for them at all. We don't work for them at all. Like, <laughs> yeah, we work for you, right? Uh, well, you know, go through our application process. We think about it. <laughs> well, it was funny our people get back to your people. Because they <laughs> would, the group owner would literally put a post. Can't wait to see your guys' in the next video. Like, the, it became a thing that we would be posting this video. So every time homework or anything, we that's how we would respond. That, okay, so give, give me an example of ho- when you say homework. Number one, okay. I cringe. But 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 like what 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 Limited is uh, like? Syndrome. How about that one, Corey? That one was funny. Okay, so so I dressed up as a doctor, and I okay. made a bad like infomercial of limited belief symbo- syndrome, oh, like a full on commercial ad. Okay. Yeah, and made it look like, uh, do you suffer from LBS? What is LBS? And I made it like an, a bad. Sense bad like commercial that way right got Uh, it it. then we would make it look like a hand was on the post and it's holding a phone and there'd be two phones next to each other and i'd be talking to Corey on my phone into his phone and then we'd switch and we'd argue got it who had the best phone i mean it was just you're just like messing around totally i mean it started with uh someone was running a challenge and so every day they would give you stuff to do, right? And that was kind of where we would do that. But we, we would go in, you know, anytime, you know, Catherine Jones and Jamie Atkinson were doing a, you know, a kind of a cross promotion in her group. And, and we would also respond with doing a fun video, like talking them up and just making it fun. But then guess who's still branded, right? Like we, we then talked Catherine up in her group, talked Jamie up because uh, he was the one pitching something in that group. And then, but we're still branded as we make these comments. And so even Jamie how did, Jackman, how did you brand just because you have high, you know, like hindsight hacking behind you or oh, because no, no, it was, it was full on branded videos. Yeah. Like, you know, you've got the, like you, have your, you have your watermark or something. Like the oh, bottom no, it, corner. it wasn't hidden at all. It was, it was, hindsight <laughs> it hacking. was in front of your face. Like where yeah, was so, the brand? <laughs> so, so here's, here's what's funny. Like there was one picture and it looked like it was the, a desk. Okay. It was the LBS one. And I had my two screens here. I was having a slideshow on one screen and then me talking on the other screen. But in the middle is just a picture sitting on the desk that had our logo. Oh, it was, it was right there in sight, but anytime we did anything, it was branded. We actually changed our whole company because we got so branded for hindsight hacking. We had to change the company because our company name made no sense anymore. <laughs> so, so we unbranded our company name and we branded it hindsight hacking media. 
That's funny. Yeah. That's really funny. Well, hey, I hope everyone listening to that uh, is just absorbing all of it because that's a huge, that's a huge thing right there. Uh, nice little high. Hey, uh, Tigo's in the house. What's up, Tigo? Always good to see you, my friend. Uh, it says, hey, there's never too much <laughs> of you guys. That's true. It's true. Um, hey, Biz Bros in the house. Shout out to Biz Hello, Bros. Uh, you guys rock. Um, so thanks for coming and hanging out, Biz Bros. Uh, so, yes, uh, this is good. That's one fun way. Now, that's what you're posting. So, like, create that's and creating interesting content. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to, here's where I'm going with it. Like, I've thought about the spotlight so much, and I want it. I. I I think my dream job is my secret. I haven't really told too many people this. Uh, my and I by dream job, I mean literally, it's my dream job. I don't want to actually do it. I just want to dream about doing it. Okay. And it's <laughs> and it's the Tonight Show. Ooh. So I, Jimmy Fallon's awesome. Conan O'Brien's funny. I've never been a huge Letterman fan. I've seen his stuff. I know he's fantastic. No disrespect to him, but Carson is the one uh -huh. that that is by far my favorite. And got me to, to really like that that format. And there's without talking about me for a bunch, the reason is there's all these fun little cool segments. Yep. And so I, that comes to mind as you're sharing those ads. It's bringing that life and that creativity into it. And so I guess I don't know if this is a confession or it's like, oh, I'm just putting myself out there. So now I have to go do it. <laughs> but It sounds anyway. like we're going to have a new show coming up that's modeled after you, the night show. All <laughs> members watching right now have no idea what's coming in the next 90 to 120 days. It's going to sure, be so good. Cool. <laughs> yes, we just made some big moves uh, this this last uh, even a uh, couple weeks. So um, it'll it'll we have some really fun stuff coming. <laughs> nice. So it'll be cool. Um, keep Keep watching. We'll have to have you guys back out. Absolutely, man. Anytime. For sure. Anytime. And Tico says, "Yes, I'm in. I want to produce." Yes, Tico. We need to keep. We need to keep talking, for sure. Um. So okay, cool. Let's do this. Oh, We've covered tonight. a ton about what's that? She said, "Spotlight tonight." <laughs> Spotlight tonight. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Did we just get the name. I love it. I it love it. Like so name. Yeah. I like. How do you not use that? It just. It's meant to be. Yeah. yeah. Um. And okay. So let's do this. Uh, you guys, we're talking talking about podcasts, all different angles. You guys have covered. You've gone into a bunch of detail. I really appreciate it. Um, people that are leaning in, that know that they're not going to do any of this, but the, it's still really, really valuable. Where's the best place to find you guys? Well, uh, they can head over if they are thinking about launch launching a podcast. Profitswithpodcasts.com. Uh, learn a little bit more. But if you already have a show and you just need some help with editing it they can always go to get hhm.com and and uh find us there so i know we didn't give you that link ahead of time but uh g-e-t-h-h-m.com will take us take them to it yep no yep. no worries hey so profits with podcast.com really great resource powerful resource for, your, for everyone listening and uh get hhm you said dot com uh -huh. yep. yep okay cool not that's not a bad domain. It's short. I've like we've been thinking about domains a ton. Yeah. So hindsight hacking marketing media media. Dang it! You said it earlier, and oh, I said the wrong word. Is. So HHM. Yeah. So you guys can see this. A great great resource here. There's Corey. So I love that you guys are so on point with branding here. Look, the hat, the hair. You got. <laughs> you guys are who you say you are. I love it. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we try really, really hard to have zero surprises. Like if we commit to something, that's what it is. We're not going to say, okay, you come into this and then like the next week go, but you also need to buy this because we hated when people did that. Yeah. Yes. And you kind of you kind of alluded to that earlier. You're like, what if we just – you know, here's all the services. There's no surprise. It's just like, here's the price. Here's all the stuff you get. And I really personally prefer that buying process. And obviously our sales process mirrors that. It's just like, here's the, here's all the stuff you want. It makes you go fast. It's all taken care of. And here, here's the amount. So I, I like that process. Uh, <laughs> You're going to have a lot of time when we're done. I know. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> it's going to be modeled it. after entertainment tonight, and it's going to have the same logo. Yeah. Yes. We should just mix all big shows. Da, na, 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 na. Wait, isn't that ESPN? That is but ESPN. for the Tonight Show? I know, yeah. no, I know, I know. <laughs> mix we it just, mix and match. We just, people will be, there's going to be mass consumer confusion. <laughs> It'll be perfect. 
on the show. Yeah, but all some it'll be oddly familiar to everyone as well. So reproducing <laughs> begins July. <laughs> this is fun. Hey, you, you guys have been fun. Thank you so much. Hey, last question we always like to, to wrap up with. Uh, putting yourself out there, serving another human being. We're sacrificing uh, our own time away from, you know, our own relationships, our own resources, as we all know, um, you know, empl employing others and just investing in all different types of way into a business um, that well, number one makes us all a little crazy. Number two, the big question is why do we do it? And so, you know, what's the impact for you guys? You know, wh what's the why, what's the drive of being an entrepreneur, leaving security, your six figure plus jobs and putting yourself out there to go create and connect with others? Ooh, definitely. This is, this is fun. The, the why, you know, and, and if you notice at gethm.com that it had a big thing about impactors, right? Like our whole thing. And, and this is basically when Ron and I met and we started doing any business together was because we always found such a strong, you know, a great feeling and of being able to help somebody achieve something that they didn't think they could. Right. And that was kind of like our both our, our own superpower of, of being able to, somebody thought they could only get to this ceiling, wherever that, but we could take them up higher. And, uh, and so anything that we do, we know like a message needs to get out from our client and we know how to help them get it out there. Right. And then that's what they're good at. They can impact so many people. We, you know, if that one person impacts a thousand people, then Ron and I can take a little credit because they impacted that. And so that's kind of our, our own why is we only work with impactors. If you're just out there to make money, like you're, we're not the right people for you. Like it, but if you've got a strong reason of who you're helping and why you're helping them, like that's that, with that is what is such a, a, a thrill for Ron and I, for sure. Yeah. If we've, we've turned away people that, I mean, look, everyone in this world wants to make money. If you do something just to make money, like we are definitely not your guys at all. Like we've turned people away. Like we want them to have a message that are trying to impact the world to be a better place, period, end of story. And we'll help you do that. Um, but that, that fills our bucket. Right. And I, I'm going to share a little story because <clears throat> you hear, you hear this all the time, give without expecting anything in return. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I will tell you, I don't know if I believed that. Okay. But I always practiced it. There was one gentleman who hired me to do from that group that we talked about earlier, hired mm -hmm. me to do a logo on a podcast because he was launching on Friday on Apple and we, we were talking on Monday and I was like, all right, well, let's hurry up and get you this cover art, dude. Like, if you, like, come on. Right. And so Monday I created this cover. Art. He loved it. And I was like, oh, I, I'm excited for you to launch. Did you get accepted to iTunes? He goes, oh, you have to apply? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't just like record a show and it goes there by itself. Like it takes some time, <laughs> right? And so I remember it was one in the morning and I'm I'm on Zoom with this guy. And my wife's like, what are you doing? And I go, I got to help this guy. Like I, I know how to get him submitted. I'll just submit him. I'm not gonna charge him. It's just it's the right thing to do. Literally, I, I was trying to walk him through the process, and I go, John, this is what I need you to do, man. I know you don't know me. I just need like all your login information to Apple. <laughs> like, just just no give it to me. Just give it to me. I will submit everything. I I promise I won't keep it. He gave me everything. We got him submitted. He launched on time. And he's like, do I owe you anything? And while we were waiting for stuff, I get, I created some other things because it was awkward because we were on Zoom waiting. Um, but uh, I was like, no, man, like you just go do you. Go be your show. Go do your show. He has referred so much business to us hmm. based off a hundred dollar design and some Powerful. time and some time. Yeah. And right. a lot of login info. It was funny because my wife's like, he's not going to give you all that. I go, he's going to give me it because he wants to be on iTunes. Like, just go to bed. 
I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you go to the couch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Ron and Corey, uh, thank you so much for, for coming out here. I love that you guys lead, lead with your heart and you're out there to serve. Obviously, you, um, because you're serving so well and, and getting result and, and doing the work, um, people keep flocking to you. You're working with some great clients and you have some great processes and a growing team. So congrats to that. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. And uh, Spotlight, Sales Ascenders, like we will be bringing you consistently more entrepreneurs that are on the front lines getting real results for real people. I uh, can't wait to see you guys back on the next one. Mm -hmm.